Yeah. Hi. Um, so I'm uh, Jose Cardona. Um, I contribute to Scala Z as well, um, specific, uh, specifically recently on the IO Monad part. And I have a library which is in milestone mode right now, but um, it is still very useful to me. It's called TSEC. Um, and this is actually, so this library is the basis of what will be Scala Z Crypto um, soon. So once this is, once I have conc like concreted a lot of the abstractions, this will be all ported to Scala Z Crypto. Um, so yeah, so this is the library. And I'll talk about a little bit about um, type safe cryptography um, in Scala specifically. So um, for anybody that has done, like how many of you have ever touched the JCA or have tried to do anything with like cryptography before? Um, so a few of you. Um, so usually when you, when you try to do it like super manually, um, almost everything is cumbersome. And by the time of, you know, back in 2004, when they made this, like type safety was apparently didn't exist. Um, even though Haskell was invented in the nineties, but you know, um, yeah, it, it didn't exist back then. We're going to pretend. So, um, when the JCA was made, apparently, um, it was okay to make everything an integer and a string. So when you are, let's say we want to encrypt a super, like we just want to encrypt um, a super basic hello world. Um, I usually start with encryption because it tends to be a good example. So let's, uh, is, that, is that, can you view that or should I go into, I think presentation mode might, might work here. Um, okay, so, um, okay. So let's let's do some like super manual crypto like Java style first to see how how uh, how great it is. So we import Java X crypto. Let's just use a wildcard import just for the sake of you know fun. And then let's say we want to import. Uh, we just want to encrypt Hello World. Um, so my you know plain text. Hello. World. And then we gotta use the get bytes one from Java, um, right? So then, okay. So now we need to get a cipher to encrypt. So we need to get an instance of a cipher for some reason, even though it's a pure function to encrypt. So we need an instance of cipher. Oh wait, no, first we need a key. So we need first, I think it's a key factory something. It's it's some some factory thing. A key is a secret uh, key, no, key factory. I think it's key factory. Key factory? Oh, maybe, maybe. All right, so we got a, uh, we're going to use AES. So let's get a, an instance and let's see, is it uh, generate? No, it's not this one. It's, uh, I think, I think it's actually key factory. Key, key factory. Yeah. Pretty sure it's this one, yes. And we have to use key factory, and then we have to get an instance of AES, apparently. I'm hoping it's this one. And it's not even this one. So, I mean, like, I think right right here, we're kind of seeing how unintuitive this kind of is. Um, so, I mean, off the top of your head, it's, like, not even grouped properly. you got to go through a factory to even hit anything that you want to use. Um, and it's something like secret key SPI. So, okay, let's, let's, let's just create the... Random 16 byte key for AES. So let's just say key, key bytes. I mean, of course, this is super insecure. We're just going to make an array of bytes of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Just going just gonna to check that the length is fine really quickly. Okay. It is. Okay. Because I mean, it, otherwise, it's going to throw an exception, which is awesome and type safe. Um, but okay, so let's create a secret key. Secret key, no, new secret key spec. All right, which is, okay, and it, I think it takes uh, bytes first. So it takes the key bytes, and it's gonna take an algorithm. And then now we need an instance of Cypher. Cypher, get yeah, instance, and then let's use AES, uh, you know, CBC, or let's use CTR, no padding. So, all right. Um, I mean, 
I'm, I'm gonna finish this example for the sake of it, but I'm pretty sure you guys can see that there's absolutely, like the concept of type safety is essentially a luxury there. Um, so we have everything is, is either like a string or bytes. I mean, even if you have this wrapper class, this, this class just takes, a, like, just takes some bytes in the string and it can throw an exception. And then when we try to follow the types, so first now we gotta mutate the cipher class, which is awesome. Um, so we gotta init. And then if you see the signature, it takes either an int. I mean, wh what is an int? And then, you know, uh, a key or an algorithm parameter spec or a bunch of stuff. So let's say we actually don't know cryptography too well. And we're going to say, hmm, just an int and a key is the easiest one to pick. So we're going to just pass our... Uh, so apparently the, the, the actual ints are constants, which is decrypt mode, encrypt mode, and, you know, um, even though the majority of these, so private key mode, so these two don't apply. This this one doesn't like doesn't apply here. So these two will probably all throw an exception. But let's let's assume we're a good Java programmers and we're gonna use cipher dot encrypt mode, right? And then we're gonna pass it our key. And then we're gonna do all we gotta do is now cipher dot do final. And then we gotta pass it our bytes. So my plain text. Okay. So if if this was like how we intended to encrypt and we just stopped there, then um, it might be clear to some of you, but not to all of you, that um, if if that's all we return, if that was our function, then you would never be able to decrypt this because this does not have the initialization vector. So in general, um, anytime you do any sort of low-level Java crypto, um, it tends to be um, extremely cumbersome, none of the APIs make sense, everything is grouped terrible, and type safety just like is not a thing um, because um, there, there are no types. Um, as you see, you, you have no idea what this array of bytes was encrypted with. Um, you have no idea. So this, this secret key, right, this doesn't even tell you the, the type of the algorithm, it just says it's a secret key spec. Which is which is which extends key spec, which extends blah, and then it extends the world. Um, so a while ago, um, I was chatting with my friend Edmund, and we thought, hmm, I think I can do something better than this. Um, so I did, and that's where TSEC came, comes from. So TSEC is essentially type safe cryptography. So it's just adding a layer of crypt like type safety in compile time checks to uh, all almost all cryptographic constructs on the JVM. Um, and now let's do like the exact same thing. So if you guys recall, we used AES-CTR. We used, so we used 128 bits of key or 16 bytes. So now let's, let's do the same thing. So let's, we're gonna import TSEC. And we're gonna import common because common has a, a few helpers. Um, now we're gonna import TSEC. Uh, we're gonna do cipher, cipher. And we're gonna import J, uh, JCO. Wait, hold on. I think. Sorry. It, this is okay. This is not a. This is more of an error with. Um, did I? It might not be in this repository. Sorry. One second. I might have to refresh my SPT build. Because in presentation mode. Okay, this was super ad hoc, so I, I wasn't even sure if everything was in here. Let me double check. So it should be, but for some reason it's not here. So that's we gotta. This is what developing in Scala is like. It's like, oh my God, it's not here. We gotta try to compile everything. So oh, sorry, give me a second. It seems it seems that it didn't download the ciphers, so it's it it should it should uh it should have it should like autofill um, tsec cipher jca because it's in the build, so it should you know, in theory, here it's uh, yeah, so it should be there. But you know, oh wait, no, I'm in. Sorry. I'm a, I'm a, I'm the library writer and I don't even remember my own API. I have it. Okay, it's T for T sec cipher symmetric API because we have asymmetric and symmetric ciphers. So okay, we're, let's uh, let's redo this example. Um, so we're gonna have um, essentially our plain text. Remember, we wanted to encrypt hello world. So my plain text plain text is going to be. I think I have to. Okay, so it's gonna be hello world. And now TSEC has a helper function called, so we want to get the, so the nullary get bytes returns bytes in UTF-8 um, encoding. So we're gonna use UTF-8 bytes. 
which is essentially a helper. And we have a new type. Uh, actually, it's using basically the same technique that Alex just presented. Um, similar, uh, except with casts. But so if we see the type of this thing, um, there you go. So the type of this is actually plain text, which tends, which is actually just a new type over array of bytes. So it doesn't do any any boxing, but it gives us a bit more compile time safety, saying that this is our plain text, and um, it's a, it's a little bit of a different new type because it's not an opaque one. Um, it's usually when you do want to handle encrypt like cryptography stuff, you don't want your you don't necessarily always want your type to be opaque, um, even though like this this you know this might this might uh, it might be a little bit worse in terms of like complete safety. So TSEC kind of ha assumes that you, you're going to be a big boy and you're not going to mutate the array. Um, so we're going to give you, so TSEC gives you com compile time safety at the function call time. But um, if you decide to you know, pretend the plain text is just an array of bytes that you can mutate, then I, we can't protect you from that. And part of the reason is also that it's not going to box the array if I do it this way. With a subtyping relation, it's not going to. Um, so this actually, the, the bytecode of this is an unboxed new type. Whereas if we use an opaque type, it will box the array of bytes, so it's kind of, kind of an iffy thing to do um, with arrays. So anyway, um, now the only difference is that now we have we need an instance of an, an encryptor, but so encryptor is equal to so we're using AES one two eight CTR, which is this is what we were doing. So I think it's a uh, get encryptor, and then now we actually need an IO type because essentially um, this w like we are essentially going to have some random number generation in there, and that's not referentially transparent. So now we need something that actually. So we're going to use cat IO, sadly for now. Um, but so if you if we look at this call now this one is actually going to be a ref referentially transparent call, so um, this is not actually going to like mutate and give us an encryptor. Um, and en encryptors are type class for encryption, but it's going to give us an encryptor of it's going to give us an I/O of encryptor of so our encryptor is typed for AES one two eight CTR, and um, it gives us the the type of essentially the 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 key, and we'll, we'll see we'll see how all the types align really nicely soon. Um, so now. Let, let me go back into presentation mode because it's probably horrible to see this way. Um, so we have our A8, so we have our encryptor now. Now let's actually use it in a for comprehension and describe our program, our little, our little encryption program. And the last thing we, we do need to encrypt is essentially something we, I call essentially an, um, I call it an IV strategy in this case, but really what it is is just more, num like it's a random number generation for the initialization vector. Um, so IV strat is called, so, and it is parameterized over the, the type of the cipher. So we're, we're, I'm going to call it default IV strategy. And this one's a little bit different because this one will not initialize state until you actually use it. So this one is not going to be wrapped in IO, but this one, this one, um, the actual function calls are in IO. So there's that. So now let's do val our program. So let's. Let's evaluate our encryptor. Um, unfortunately, sometimes I take I take it implicitly, so there's that. So let's now we need a secret key, and secret keys um, when you use any sort of key generation algorithm um, that we're going to use a pseudo random generator. So that is going to have some amount of state. So now let's actually get a key. So we're going to do AES one two eight CTR, and then we're going to generate key into IO. So now we have a key. And we're, we're going to see how all the types align like really nicely soon, because I'll return everything. And then let's encrypt our, essentially, we're going to encrypt the same plain text, our hello world. So we're going to say encrypted is going to be AES128CTR encrypt. So we're going to say encrypt of IO. Then we're going to encrypt, so we take my plain text, uh, my key that I just put here. And then uh, this is fine because I have an implicit IV strategy there. Now let's let's yield. We're gonna get our. I'm gonna show our encryptor. 
Oh, this one needs to take it implicitly, so I think I need... This doesn't look nice, I know. Um, well, here, I'll, I'll do it a different way. I'll get the, the IV directly. And then I'll pass the IV directly here. So I think it takes the IV here. And then it just needs the encryptor. So, okay, there we go. So I'm gonna show the types of everything. So key, key, IV, encrypted. And then I'll, I'll, I'll also decrypt it in a single call. So let's let's take, we're gonna decrypt our ciphertext. So encrypted, which is ciphertext, and it takes our key. Now we're gonna show how all the types align. So let's look at the signature. It's gonna be a little bit long because I'm returning like five different things. So let me shorten a little bit. So what's the what's the difference between this signature and the one that we had from the Java thing? Um, now, okay, actually I don't need to return the encryptor, so, because you guys already can see the type up there. So let me uh, make this a little bit easier to, to see. Um, okay, so you guys can see that the secret key, the actual symmetric key, um, the encryption key, is now parameterized over AES128 CTR. So that means this gives us some compile time safety in that that key, um, if you manage to lift it into that type without casting it like a brute, um, then you have that compile time safety that that key is 128 bits long. And that key will work for AES 128CTR. Um, and the constructors that TZAC gives to actually, for example, lift keys and build keys and double check their, their length and whatever, um, will ensure that your key is valid for using in encryption decryption. Um, same with the initialization vector. So our initialization vector is also parameterized, which gives us, which essentially says this is of the right length. Um, our ciphertext, if we look at the ciphertext class, contains the content, so this is the raw encrypted content, and a reference to the IV because you need it to decrypt. Um, now I, I, don't, I don't know how to go back in this mode, so I have to <laughs> uh, exit full screen, and exit presentation mode, and then go back. Sorry, this is clunky, but I don't know, I don't know the shortcuts. Okay, and so our ciphertext is parameterized as well. And we have our play text. And let's, uh, let's just run our program at the end of the world on safe run sync or something. And here we go. So let's run this. Sorry, I could not find, let's see. Oh, I need to pass encrypted to this as well. It takes an encryptor implicitly. Um, and there, there's only, this is just a thing about Scala. For some reason, we can't create implicit and for comprehensions, I wish we could. Um, because essentially, things that you can, you only need one of, um, but you you would like to have like an afford comprehension or something. Um, I, th I think it, it might be possible soon, but anyway, so we can see actually the, 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 the result of it. And we can see that this is actually a new type. So for example, the secret key, even though at compile time, it shows us it's a secret key of AES, like 128 CTR, it's actually just a secret key spec, right? So we've actually added compile time safety on that. Um, we've augmented all of our encryption stuff with types. Um, so here, now this is going to be a lot harder to go wrong because if, if I try to create a different key with a different algorithm, um, let's use 256 CTR. And the, so it's still AES and it's still, you know, counter mode, but now the key length has changed. And now this will not encrypt and this will not compile. So it's going to exploit the compiler because you used a different key length to try to encrypt something. So in general, um, what TSEC does is that it um, essentially adds a layer of compile time safety to all of your cryptography. And this extends not just to ciphers. Um, so this extends to hash functions, to message authentication, um, digital signatures, uh, you know. Um, and it even if any of you have ever used HTTP4S, um, I, I maintain that as well. Um, I, it also has an authentication on authorization module. So we're talking about the uh, signed cookies, um, uh, JWTs, and um, authorization helpers, and so on and so forth. Um, so the philosophy is essentially like 
making crypto suck less on the JVM. Um, and I'll just show one more example for the sake of showing more code. So let's say we want to sign some, let's say we want to sign a message. Um, we want to use HMAC, which is like a super common thing you want to do um, for when you're signing a token or if you're signing a cookie or you're signing anything. Um, and if you want to verify it. So let's, let's, uh, it's only a few imports. So import tsec dot, uh, I think it's Mac and then JCA or tsec Mac. Okay. So I don't need plain text now. Um, so we're, we're just, I'm going to annotate all the types. So it, it's a little bit easier to look at. So, um, This makes it easier for autocomplete to happen. I usually cheat this way, um, but okay. So now let's get a key. Let's use HMAC SHA, mm, you know, 256. Oh, I need to import cat's effect IO. Okay, so all we need is a key. And let's say, you know, um, so HMAC SHA, and we're going to sign. So we're going to sign our array of bytes. So, sorry, one second. I need, what, what is it? So it takes my plain text and it's going to take our key. Then we're going to also verify, you know, so, and I have two functions. I have one that is essentially a verify, which takes in, is essentially um, an algebraic data type, which is, you know, a little bit more useful than Boolean, but it's essentially Boolean. So I'll just use the Boolean one now um, for the sake of um, the fact that most people are probably used to Boolean. And it's gonna take simply the, the bytes, our initial bytes. Um, it's gonna take our Mac and it's gonna take our key. And then let's, let's just inspect the types of the output. So verify, and we're also going to run our program. So what is this? <laughs> okay, that's IntelliJ just being IntelliJ. But okay, um, as you can see that, you know, um, this makes you, this helps you write a fully run for entry transparent program in cryptography, and these are all essentially like typed, ob like you know, typed references. So if I start returning the key, then you can even see that it's a max signing key of blah. And essentially, um, this compiles up safety on um, on TSEC is going to be the basis of Scala Z crypto. So this is going to be um, any and all work that goes in here um, will essentially eventually be ported to. Um, Scala Z crypto, and after the, and this will eventually also be, you know, I'll, I'll release, I'll start um, releasing, you know, release candidate releases, and then eventually a binary compatible release. Um, part of the reason it works on cats is because it works on HTTP 4s, um, which and it's essentially the the most complete um, thing we have for authentication in HTTP 4s. But uh, once um, eventually, um, once it's ported to Scala Z. A lot of the things that are using the cast effect type classes will be using IO and so on and so forth. But yeah, so in general, that's, that's kind of what TSEC does. Um, and it allows you to write like applications that can use authentication as well if you use HTTP4S like really quickly. Um, and it, may, it just helps you screw up a little bit less. Um, I mean, you still need to have some sort of notion of what you're going to do with your security stuff. But this is simply a way that you're going to make stuff fail more at compile time than at runtime. Um, and yeah, um, that's it. Sorry, that was impromptu, but yeah. Um, any questions? Do, you have a channel, or do I have a Gitter channel? Yeah, but for yeah I do. Um, it's, just, it's just called, uh, it's here. So there's a, there's a Gitter link here. Oh, okay. um, anything else? Yes? So, 
No, it, they're wrappers. Um, like re-implementing means I would have to roll my own crypto and that's like a no-no. Um, so that, number one, um, that's anybody that does that um, for a crypto that exists already is completely wrong. Um, you should just not roll your own crypto uh, for multiple reasons. One, you have no idea how it's going to actually be optimized by C2 um, and if it may even introduce a timing attack. Um, secondly, um, a lot of the cryptography primitives on the JVM are actually um, intrinsics. So, for example, if you use any of the HMAC functions or any of the hashing functions, um, like the SHA-2, SHA-1 ones, um, they delegate to an intrinsic. So actually what happens is that once your that method is compiled and, it, and it's hot, um, that is going to delegate to some very some JVM intrinsic C code. So um, the thing is, TSEC does not only abstract out the JCA. Uh, I have Lipsodium bindings, and I also have um, some Bouncy Castle bindings for certain modules. And when I've done benchmarks for Bouncy Castle versus Lipsodium, um, one thing that I was surprised at is that um, the JVM was, you know, keeping up in speed with a lot of the primitives, especially the, the, the hashing function, the message digest, like SHA and HMAC, because, it, well, HMAC is just essentially the hashing function with, a, with some key manipulation. But, um, so I was wondering, like, what was happening. And what happens is that th those, like, um, those functions delegate to primitives, and that's exactly why. So you'll see that, they, like, these, um, like, JVM functions are actually, can keep up in speed with what's out there in C. So for a lot of the primitives, and for example, AESCTR also delegates to like optimized instructions, uh, but not all of them do. And the ones that don't are significantly slower. So AESGCM, the, the, even with the JNI overhead, because if you know about JNI, you know that JNI copies all of the arguments. So it does not give you a direct reference, like Haskell's unsafe, um, unsafe um, FFI. So there is gonna be like some cache thrashing um, and even with that, it's uh, Lipsodium is a 10 times faster um, for AES GCM and authenticated encryption. Uh, I'm saying the TSEC Lipsodium one, um, faster than the JVM. But for the primitives that aren't, what's it called, that are not uh, intrinsics, then Lipsodium is faster. So um, yeah, and we, we try, like, I try not to implement primitives on TSEC in general. I just, they just violate the, the basic rule of don't roll your own crypto. Um, anything else? No? Okay, yeah, so that's it.